Hi, Kevin here. Well, for dinner tonight, I'm going to fix baked eggs and I'm going to top them with Swiss cheese and maybe some bacon and maybe some green onion. We'll see. But I'm going to bake the eggs in two halves of this acorn squash. You can find acorn squash in any supermarket. I found mine in the garden. Okay, this is how I prepare the squash. All right, acorn squash can be a nightmare to cut. It has a really hard skin and it's got a shape that just rolls around on the cutting board. So what I do is slice off just a bare section from one side. Like this, I didn't take off much. This way, the squash will lay flat on the work surface. And now, this video might go south very quickly because the squash is still difficult to cut. So what I do is start at the midway point, and I'm going to be cutting from the stem end to the blossom end. So straight down with the knife, and then rock it down. Well, that worked. And then you have to find that opening again. Okay. And then I need to go in the opposite direction. Done. Now let me show you a really cool way to remove the seeds quickly and easily. I use a common ice cream scoop to remove the seeds. And what you do is just go around and around and around. Done. We'll do the next one. Move this over so you can see. Yeah, just twist the ice cream scoop. No seeds. So if anyone tells you to use a spoon or a grapefruit, grapefruit spoon to remove the seeds, you'll know the better vehicle is an ice cream scoop. Much less scraping needed that way. All right, now, here's my situation here. I was going to roast too close. Sorry about the hand. Um, I was going to roast the squash in a 400 degree oven, but that is going to take about an hour. And it's already, what time? It's 614. It's late and I'm hungry. So I'm going to cook the squash in the microwave. I think that's going to take about 12 minutes. Okay, and before I set these squash to cook, I'm going to just give them a little short shot of olive oil, just a tiny amount, and then brush it all along the flesh. that and then I'm going to give them a little sprinkling of kosher salt, some pepper, where's my pepper mill? Here it is. And then I know some people will microwave these uh, cut side up, other people do cut side down. I'm going to do cut side down today. By the way, I made the same uh, baked egg recipe yesterday, and I did it in the conventional oven. It worked out really well. Okay, I'm going to microwave these for 12 minutes, and then I'll come back. Okay. While the squash is cooking, I wanted to tell you that you can save these seeds 
and roast them just as you would pumpkin seeds. They're really delicious. Or you can shake the seeds onto a paper towel, uh, just rinse them, put them on a paper towel, let them dry, store them over winter, and when spring arrives, you can plant them in your garden. Okay, we'll be back. All right, I have the squash in the microwave for just 10 minutes, and then I let it sit for about five minutes, and let's test. Yeah, the skin pierces very easily with a knife, so these are definitely cooked. I'm gonna flip them over. Ooh, they actually got a little brown inside. That's nice. And then, I guess, I can go ahead and just cook them inside of this little casserole dish. So what I'm going to do is first add some Swiss cheese. A lot, maybe a tablespoon or so. This is just shredded Swiss cheese. Nothing fancy. It's not Gruyere, although you could certainly use Gruyere if you like. And then I'm going to add the eggs. And these are super fresh eggs. I buy a brand called Feather Ridge because they are produced locally. Okay, the eggs are in. Then what do we want to do? Let's see. I want to add some salt and pepper. Hope you can see all right. I'll move you in a little closer. A little kosher salt and some pepper. And then I'm going to add put some Parmesan cheese. I have some leftover grated parm. I'm going to sprinkle this not directly over the yolk, because I kind of want the yolk to be visible. A little more, probably using a teaspoon on each egg. And then, over here I have some bacon that I cooked earlier and put in the refrigerator. And I'm just cutting it up with scissors, like so, just to make little bits of bacon. I probably have enough here. So then I'm going to put the bacon, there's my oven. Yeah, I've preheated the conventional oven to 400 degrees because I cannot bake the eggs in the microwave because they would explode. I guess I could pierce the yolk and then they wouldn't explode, but then the yolk wouldn't be that much fun. Well, this is looking pretty attractive already. Yeah, just a little bit of bacon in each. Um, in each squash. Okay, then I'm going to bake these just until the whites are set, but hopefully the yolks are still soft. Let me talk with you. Yeah, when I made this yesterday evening, the, I had the oven set to 425 degrees and I baked the eggs for 20 minutes. Big mistake. The eggs were really hard, okay? And I know some people like really thoroughly hard cooked eggs. I do not. I like a runny yolk or at least the soft yolk. So 20 minutes at 425 was way too long. So. I'm going to watch it tonight. The oven again is at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm going to check the eggs. I 
think after 10 minutes. All right, I'm going to put this in the oven and then we'll come back. All right, here's the squash with the eggs baked in the squash. Now, I had this in the oven for 10 minutes and I checked the eggs were definitely not done enough. They were really loose, so I gave them another five minutes, and now they might be overdone. So maybe the correct timing is more like 12 minutes. But I, it's not too hard. It's certainly not like it was last night. And maybe that's cheese on top that just looks, makes the egg look overcooked. We shall see. Anyway, I'm going to garnish these with some scallion that I cut up with my scissors. Sorry, I'm holding the camera with one hand. And I forgot to tell you that Mr. Fox is in Manhattan tonight, so I am dining solo. And that's okay. If you find yourself alone, don't hesitate to cook for yourself great to cook for yourself because nobody's going to complain. All right, I'm going to plate these up and then I'll show you what they look like on the plate. All right, here's what it looks like on the plate. I like the colorful toppings of crispy bacon bits and uh, the cut scallions. And for dessert, I'm having some of that 1950 apple crisp that I made for you the other day. I actually made another batch. It is so delicious. Okay, I'm going to have a taste. Now, I don't know if I should eat this with a fork and a knife or with just a spoon. I ate it with a fork last night. I'll try a spoon right now. Okay. Squash is very tender. Oh, and look at the yolk. Okay, you have to see this. This is really hot. <laughs> the yolk, here it is. The yolk is perfect. It's not undercooked, it's not overcooked. So that was 15 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, I'm gonna need my knife. I'm trying to be tidy here. Only because you are watching. Okay, here it is. Bon appetit. It's even better than, well, it is vastly better than the one I made last night because the egg is not overcooked. This is truly scrumptious, you guys. Well, I hope you will give this, I don't even know what I'm going to call it, um, eggs baked in acorn squash, a gratin of eggs in acorn squash, I don't know. We'll see what title I come up with when I publish the video. Um, but please give it a try. And uh, it, it's a, a terrific dish for late summer, autumn, winter, really any time of the year. It's very filling too. And I think it's pretty healthy. So again, thank you for watching and please post a comment below. I really love hearing from you. Uh, and that's all. Okay, I'll see you next time, probably tomorrow. Thanks again. Bye-bye.